right, um, this is Brett with the Hub Productions. We're here with Misha Collins, the star of Supernatural. Well, thanks for coming out to Australia to see us, Misha. It's good to be here. Um, obviously, you're a fairly new character in the show, just entering now uh, this most recent season. Um, as an actor, is it difficult to sort of enter the show as a new character in something that's already got three years of history behind it? Um, generally speaking, I would say yes. It is hard to come into a show that's um, established its its rapport amongst the cast and crew already and the storyline and everybody sort of knows what they're doing and you're the new kid at school and you don't really know how you fit in. I've had that experience a lot doing guest work on other television shows. But um, working on Supernatural has been great because they were all, everybody, cast, crew, production, everybody was incredibly warm and welcoming and made me feel pretty at home. There was a, still a, a moment of feeling like, is this, am I doing the right thing here, not knowing if, if the tone of what I was doing was fitting in, but um, much more so than any other show that I've ever worked on, it was, it was easy to, to settle into. Oh, good, because um, that, that opening scene with Castiel, um, that has made such a huge impact on the fans. It's a very, very popular scene uh, with uh, you entering. Um, did, did you sort of have any idea that uh, Castiel would make such a big impression so early? Right from the get -go. I had no idea Castiel would make any impression whatsoever. I mean, I, I hadn't really watched the show that much, so I didn't know the canon uh, of the, I didn't know the mythology of the show, I didn't know really the storyline, and I certainly didn't know that my character, my character had the potential to be quite uh, as epic as it has turned out to be. Um, so, yeah, no, when I came on, I thought I was doing just a couple of episodes, and then that turned into a few more episodes, and a few more episodes, and and I didn't, uh, I didn't have any idea of what to expect. Um, it's been, it's been quite surprising. I had no idea I was going to wind up in Australia <laughs> nine months later. It's pretty awesome. And um, when, I mean, obviously, you know, things are very fast on television. You've got to get an hour out every week, just about. Um, with that, do you get much time to sort of develop your character, or is there sort of a creative, like yourself, or is there a creative team sort of working on that behind the scenes for you, or how much is you sort of divided between the two? I think that because television is so fast-paced that, um, generally speaking, the actor is expected to do most of the work on their character by themselves, because everyone else in production, the producers, the writers, the directors, they have so much else to think about in such a short, compressed period of time that really it's up to the actor to figure out their stuff on their own for the most part. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that there are, there are s sometimes some exceptions to that, but for the most part, you don't get a lot of rehearsal time, you don't get a lot of conversation with the writers and producers about what you're doing. So it's a, it's a lot of sort of winging it and little tweaking as you're shooting, but mostly, mostly you gotta kind of figure it out on your own. And you, you either sink or swim on your own merit, you know. Um, just with the uh, story of supernatural, there's, um, there's a lot of mythology involved there, there's a lot of stories, a lot of which actually come from actual history, some of which from you know, age-old tales. Um, is there any sort of part of the mythology, as you say, you watch the show pretty quickly straight through, um, is there any sort of part of the mythology where you sort of looked at it and wanted to investigate it further at all? Or? Um, well, I think the, the part of the mythology that I have been most interested in investigating further is the angel storyline, just because it personally affects my character so much, my character being an angel, I wanted to know as much as I could about angels. Um, I was surprised to find, I kind of expected that there was going to be some uh, more, uh, almost concrete kind of biblical references to angels that was going to give me a much clearer portrait of what they were like, um, because I think that in popular culture there's generally such a, um, sort of a, a standard blueprint for what we think of angels as being. And I kind of thought that that was drawn on from some, you know, seminal canon of, of, of uh, you know, religious texts. But as it turns out, it's pretty, it's pretty vague. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, there's not a lot of material to work with. Um, you know, there are myths and legends. There's a few references in the Bible and Revelation. Um, but it's pretty hodgepodge. Some of it comes from the Old Testament, some from the New Testament, some is from Islam, some is from Judaism, Christianity, some is from, you know, some of, of the angel ideas that we draw on is even from, you know, other pagan, uh, pagan histories. So it, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's really a kind of a pick and choose um, thing where you can choose what you want to use and what you don't. So that was kind of fun. Oh, fantastic. Um, well, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to sure. speak to us. Just um, Uh, this is Brett with the Hub Productions, and we're here today with Jared Padalecki. Jared, thank you very much for talking to us today. And sure. Welcome back to Australia. It's our second visit here in less than 12 months. Um, yeah, I know. Pretty lucky dude. So, nine months straight I work basically, and uh, I love Australia. So, I was here last June, and then now I'm here again in April. So, um, I wish that cheering was for me, but that's for Misha. So, <laughs> sure. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah. I have to do a big congratulations on Friday the 13th. Thanks, um, the biggest car opening on record, I'm pretty sure. That's, yeah. That is fantastic. Um, I have to ask you, like, which franchise like Friday the 13th? They've had so many entries. Um, it's almost gone to the point of that franchise where ever, Jason, the killer, has a huge cult following uh, for whatever reason. Uh, right. Is it sort of difficult to play the good guy in a film where most of the fans are actually rooting for the bad guy? It is, but it's also, it's, it's tough to play the good guy when the bad guy's the lead because, you know, you want to be like, I want them to want me to win. But meanwhile, if you know that, you know, they're going for Jason anyway, it's like, whatever, I'm just going to have a good time, you know. Like, I wasn't in the movie to win an Oscar or anything like that. I was just there to have a good time and tell a fun story and get scared. And I'm a big fan of Jason, so I was like, go Jason, go Jason. Wait, they're calling action, i got to run, you know. So, um, but it's fun. It was, it was fun, but it also kind of takes some of the pressure off, knowing that, you know, he's the star of the show. Um, well, it's supernatural, because that's obviously why we're here today. Yeah. Um, uh, you've actually commented on your fondness for the mythology for the show on mm -hmm. several occasions. Um, is there any sort of specific sort of mythology that's been explored in the show where you've sort of picked up a script, you've read it, and then you've thought, you know, that's really interesting, and then you've actually on your own time gone and looked into it further? Absolutely. I've looked into a lot of the stuff further. I don't know where y'all guys are, but I'll just go ahead and assume that a lot of y'all have seen up the I'm American up to date. Okay, cool. American. <laughs> um, there's actually like a, a lot of mythology behind um, drinking blood and like demon blood and, and summoning demons and stuff like that. I remember when we very first started summoning demons, you can actually look it up online. Like, people have stories about how to summon demons and what it's like and what to be aware of and what your sleep patterns will be like and stuff like that. And so I kind of looked into that and I thought it was interesting. But then um, it's really amazing to look into, they believe there's a lot of the, the people that drink blood or, you know, ingest blood in some way, shape, or form, believe that you kind of take on the attributes of whoever you're drinking the blood of. So it kind of, it's interesting to see how it's going to play out knowing that Sam um, and Ruby have kind of been dabbling in that, um, to see how, how far it takes Sam and how powerful this demon blood is, you know, over just regular blood. But other than that, you know, just the classic story of the reluctant hero, you know, that was what first got me into the show was, you know, I grew up loving Star Wars and, and lately like The Matrix and the hero who doesn't know he's the hero and the chosen one like Neo or like Luke Skywalker and he's just a dude and all of a sudden he finds out, wait, I'm the, like, I, I don't want this responsibility but then ultimately how he kind of learns the hard way that it is his destiny, you know, and every time he tries to run out that way, he's blocked here and it shuffles him back this way and then there he is again. Um, and so, so definitely with the archetypes. <clears throat> Uh, um, cool. Yeah, with them, um, obviously there's a lot of um, both CGI and stunts and prosthetics mm -hmm. uh, used throughout the show, um, often at the point where you can't actually tell which is which. Uh, Technology has gotten that good. Uh, example is your demon eyes in season two. Um, yeah. um, just have to ask, were they contacts or was that CGI and uh, which usually do you prefer using on the show? Um, in season two, the demon eyes were... Uh, were mostly contacts, but sometimes CGI. Like in, in if you're if you'll see the black grow and then shrink back, that's obviously CGI. But if it's gonna be black for a while, a lot of times they'll be throwing contacts. Um, I actually like having the contacts. It feels like it's a cheat or something. But for my sakes, instead of them going like you know, they're like okay, open your eyes now, slowly blink, and now they're black. Blink again, and now they're black. Like it feels weird. Like I just you know, stick me, cut it, stick a man and have me be there, and then you kind of feel, you feel weird, and you kind of can't see, and you almost feel like a different character, you almost feel like, I feel like a demon, because the, the context is this little slit in them, but they're black, and so the slit just goes over your pupil, it seems like you're looking at a straw, but it makes you feel kind of otherworldly, you know, like you see movies, and it's predator vision or something, like, ooh, you know, so demon vision, maybe it's kind of very focused and pinpoint like that, so I like using the context, but there's also, this episode, this season we did, I think it was in, Yellow fever, my eyes flash yellow um, because Dean thinks I'm. It Dean's hallucinating. He thinks I'm a demon. I think they flash yellow. I didn't see the episode. Um, they flash some demon color. Um, so that was CGI. Mostly, most time it's CGI nowadays because the logistics of 
putting in contacts and taking them out, um, it, it can get lengthy, um, as opposed to just fixing it in post, so, it's, so the same goes. Um, so most of the time it's, it's done in post. So saying as an actor it's often easier to work with stuff that's actually there as opposed practical. to... Practical, yeah, they say practical. Like it's going to be practical, it means literal, it's, it's going to be there. Uh, you're you're asking the demon black, black, it's going to be practical, or they'll say it's going to be a visual effect. So I like practical, you know, I don't like, you know, using, swinging a fake sword or something like that. Like, give me something to swing and feel the weight. And you just get a different reaction, you know. <clears throat> um. Obviously, um, across the last four years, you and Jensen have almost developed what is almost commonly known now as a almost like sibling-like relationship. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to filming some of the more sort of emotionally charged episodes, does that actually make it easier or sort of more difficult for you? It makes it a lot easier because he and I also are so comfortable with the characters, and we know how to set the other one off. You know, it's almost like we know we know buttons um, because we're so close with friends, um, and so we know kind of. I know how he works best. And he knows how I work best, um, so it's it makes it a lot easier in my book. All right, well, I'm, well, I'm gonna have to wrap up there. Thank you so very much for taking yeah, the time today. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, this is Evan Sanders with Hot Productions, and we're here with uh, Jensen Ackle. Jensen, thanks for coming out to Australia. Thanks for having me. No problem. Now, uh, congratulations on My Bloody Valentine. That just came out recently. I uh, was just wondering, was there anything different about shooting in sort of a 3D format compared to the usual film style? Absolutely. It's, uh, you, you've, got, you've got two cameras mounted on a, a remote uh, head, so uh, you constantly, the, the cameras are constantly calibrating themselves, and you've got somebody that's calibrating them. And, um, the, the lights are a lot harder, hotter, you lose a lot of f-stops and stuff when you're filming with two different cameras. So the process of lighting was much longer. Um, it's also shot in a wider format, so you're, you're using what normally, you, you know, you shoot close-ups and stuff. It's all kind of wide, and, and you want to feel more of the world around you. So it kind of changes up the acting style a little bit. You can't, you have to be a little bit more expressive with your body language as, as opposed to just your face. Um, so that was, that was a little different. That's cool. Yeah. Um, now, to suit natural, because that's why we're here. Yep. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot of, you do a lot of fight scenes in the series, um, a lot involving CGI and some involving actual stunts. Is there any sort of one you prefer doing in the show at all? Um, we do actually a lot of practical stunts. We, we, there's not a whole lot of, um, of, uh, of visual effects. Um, Really, the only visual effects that we have are, are sometimes, you know, the smoke, the demon smoke, and, and things like that. Um, but the actual fights and stunts and stuff, that's all practical. So, you know, we we get bumps and bruises and cuts and scrapes, just like uh, anybody would do with stunts. Um, now, you've also had a lot of different guest stars on the show. Is there any, has there been anyone in particular that you've enjoyed working with more than any other? Well, that's kind of the, the, the inter yeah the interesting thing with uh, with our show is there's only two leads, so every week is a whole new. Uh, you know, onslaught of new guest stars. So uh, we get to we get to work with a lot of different people constantly. Um, you know, we've had a couple of reoccurrings that have been really great that we wish to stuck around. Obviously, uh, you know, Jeffrey D. Morgan played the father, and uh, would have been great to, to kind of tie him in. But the show wasn't about the sons and the father; it was about the two sons. So ultimately, he had to go. Um, but yeah, you know, to, to to pick one out of the, the giant bunch that we have, we've we've been very fortunate and uh, had a lot of really really talented people. The episode with Ted Raimi, that was one of my favorites. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Mitch Pileggi and uh, yeah, that was great, those yeah. guys. It's just, yeah, we, we, we've been very fortunate. All right, uh, just finally, uh, obviously there's a huge mythology in the show that borrows from sort of everywhere mm -hmm. at once. Is there, has there ever been an episode that you've read and you've sort of thought, wow, that's really interesting and you wanted to find out more about it? Like a monster or something. Like um, I mean, it's all fairly. I mean, it's, you know, to me, like the whole concept of the show is interesting. Um, you know, dealing with actual urban legends and, and you know, we kind of kind of strayed away from that a bit uh, into the fourth season, and it's kind of become more of its own, um, you know, mythology within itself. But for the fir first, you know, season, two seasons, uh, you know, it was really we were taking actual urban legends and, and, and folklore and uh, attacking them head on. So that was that was interesting. I, I learned a lot of stuff that I didn't even know about existed. So um, that's you know that's a, a tribute to the writers and, and all their research. Cool. Um, oh, well, thanks for your time. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank Absolutely. You.